Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks all for joining this meeting. We are here today to present uh, to the public Project uh, 164 245, the rehabilitation of Bridge uh, 1431, also known as the uh, Bissell Bridge, uh, carrying I 291 uh, over the Connecticut River between the towns of uh, Windsor and South Windsor. The goal of this meeting is to present the uh, the proposed work uh, to the public and to the town representatives, uh, answer any questions and concerns. Uh, the project is in the preliminary design phase, so any feedback is appreciated, then it would be, uh, it would help us uh, in the development of the final design phase. Uh, next, next, uh, next slide, yeah. Um, so, um, uh, just uh, this this slide just about the uh, your right the civil rights um, um, slide no person shall on the basis of race or color or national origin be excluded excluded from uh, participating or subject to discrimination in uh, the development of this uh, project uh, we have a we have a couple links here uh, the first one is uh, for the survey uh, please uh, at the end of the presentation, please uh, feel free to um, to uh, provide your feedback uh, in the survey. Um, also, the the second link is to the civil rights information. Uh, recording of this uh, presentation will be posted to YouTube after the event. Uh, closed captioning include including non English translation options are available uh, on you on on YouTube as well. Um, for uh, Spanish-speaking uh, audience, uh, please take a moment to uh, read through this one. All right, thanks, Jen. Um, so this was this uh, slide just showing you how to. Um, uh, show the uh, captioning and uh, choose the uh, language of the, uh, you prefer. So uh, as shown in the picture here, you click on the show caption and then you click speak in languages and you select uh, your, your language of choice. Um, yeah. To ask questions, um, Select the Q&A tool at the bottom of the uh, Zoom uh, webinar window. Um, type in, uh, open, yeah, the window will open and then type in your question and click enter. Um, and that sh should get us the your question. If you are you know, on an audio only participant, um, dial star nine to raise and lower your hand. Um, there are uh, different ways to ask questions. You can send us an email to uh, dot project 0164-0245 at ct.gov or by phone at 860-594-2020 and leave a voicemail. Please, if you do so, uh, mention the project number, which is 164-245 or by chat, by chat in Zoom Q&A. You can also find more information on the project uh, and how to access some of the links in this uh, webpage here, uh, DOT Windsor, South Windsor 164-245. Please note that the, uh, the comment period is open through March 7th, 2024. So if you have question after today's meeting, you can uh, send us an email to this uh, email address or call this number and leave a voicemail. Uh, as uh, <clears throat> the Zoom q and is only available during this uh, uh, live session. Okay. Next, yeah. uh, this is just uh, to present to you the Project team members uh, from the Connecticut DOT, we have uh, Bao Chang, uh, principal engineer, myself, Mazian Mazian, supervising engineer, and Luke Arno, who is the project engineer. Uh, from uh, CHA, who are the uh, our designers, 
uh, Ryan Cooley, who's the project manager, uh, Jan Pexley, who's structural lead, and Jeff LeMay, who's the highway lead. We also have VN engineers uh, represented by uh, Sam and Martha as the traffic engineer. Uh, at this point, I would turn the presentation to uh, Jan Pexley from CHA to go through the different um, the proposed work for this project. So thank you for your attention and Jan, uh, uh, you. thank you. Great, thank you, Ms. So as Ms. noted, I'm Jen Pixley from CHA, designer for this project. So this evening, I'm going to be discussing state project number 164-245, which is bridge number 1431, also known as Bissell Bridge. So the purpose of this project is to maintain the bridge in a state of good repair. The project needs includes extending service life, repairing structural steel, replacing deck joints, and removing the abandoned movable inspection platform. So for the project location, Bissell Bridge carries I-291 eastbound and westbound over the Connecticut River in Windsor and in South Windsor. So the bridge carries an eight foot wide paved shared use path, um, also known as the Captain John Bissell Trail, so it is located along the north side of I-291. So the path begins at Windsor Meadow State Park, which is located on the west side of the river and continues across the bridge. The bridge was built in 1958 and widened in 1993, which included a full replacement of the superstructure. So um, here's a colored plan and elevation view of Bissell Bridge. This view shows the west side of the bridge on the Windsor side. The next slide will show the east side. So the bridge is a 14 span structure comprised of a concrete deck supported by nine welded steel plate girders. Spans one through four and 11 through 14 are four span continuous. Spans five through seven and eight through 10 are three span continuous. Over the piers, the superstructure is supported by concrete abutments and piers. So as noted, this is the east side of the bridge on the South Windsor side. So this view shows the cross section of the bridge. I-291 is a divided highway um, consisting of four um, 12 foot travel lanes, two eastbound and two westbound, 10 right foot shoulders and uh, four foot left shoulders. Concrete parapets exist at both faces. There are median barriers separating I-291 eastbound and westbound and a sidewalk barrier separating the sidewalk and I-291 westbound. So before getting into the existing conditions, I thought it would be useful to note how condition ratings are determined and the purpose of them. Per the CONDOT Bridge Inspection Manual, a condition rating is a judgment of the bridge component condition in comparison to its original as-built condition used to provide an overall characterization of the general condition of the component being rated. So condition ratings are assigned a numerical value, each indicating a different condition, eight being very good, seven good, six satisfactory, five fair, and four poor. So now I will discuss existing conditions of Bissell Bridge. Starting with the deck, overall the deck is noted to be in good condition. The underside of deck exhibits hairline cracks with random efflorescence and rust staining, isolated hollow areas and small spalls. The true condition of the deck is unknown due to the bituminous concrete wearing surface on top. Existing deck joints are in fair condition. There are modular deck joints with concrete headers located at abutments one and two and piers four, seven, and 10. Concrete headers exhibit hairline cracks, hollow areas and spalls. The modular glands are filled with debris. Um, the steel extrusions exhibit heavy rust. The joints typically show evidence of past leakage. The concrete parapets are noted to be in satisfactory condition and the medians in good condition. The light standards are in poor condition. Random light poles have dents, gouges, holes, and tears due to impact damage. So for the approaches, overall the approaches are in fair condition. The approach slabs are not visible and the approach pavement was noted to be in fair condition, which exhibit random hairline cracks with map cracking, isolated breaking up of bituminous pavement, potholes, and full width transverse cracks. Approach guide rails are present at all approaches and exhibit minor to moderate collision damage. 
uh, for the superstructure. Overall, the superstructure is in satisfactory condition. The bearings consist of elastomeric expansion bearings and steel fixed bearings. The elastomeric bearings exhibit random sole plate in contact with keeper plates, random areas of peeling paint, isolated splits, and slightly tilted anchor bolts. The fixed bearings exhibit light to moderate rust, isolated missing anchor bolts, and isolated section loss in the sole plates. The girders exhibit less than 10% of the uh, paint deterioration and isolated areas of steel section loss in web and flanges in critical and non-critical locations. And lastly, the movable inspection platform has been abandoned due to safety concerns and it will be removed. Now for this substructure, overall the substructure is in satisfactory condition. The substructure consists of reinforced concrete abutments and piers with masonry nose caps. The concrete abutments exhibit hairline cracks, light honeycombing, map cracking, hollow areas and spalls. The pier columns exhibit um, cracks up to one eighth inch wide, light to moderate scale and honeycombing, map cracking, spalls, um, random deteriorated mortar at the nose caps and H piles exposed up to five feet um, at piers four through nine. So existing condition of channel and protection. So overall channel and channel protection is in satisfactory condition. Comparison of the observed scour elevations to bottom of footings and plans reveal that the channel bed elevations have scoured below elevations of the bottom of the footings at several piers. Based on this, there will be a separate project to address these scour concerns. This separate project would include performing a pile stability analysis to confirm the bridge is stable, perform, perform a level two scour analysis to determine scour depths and properly design scour measures, um, and lastly, install the scour measures. So as stated before, the purpose of the project is to maintain a state of good repair, and the project needs include the extending the service life, repairing structural steel, replacing deck joints, and removing the abandoned um, inspection platform. So the major scope of work items includes steel strengthening and steel repairs, replacing deck joints, uh, replace the wearing surface, wearing surface and membrane, waterproofing, um, deck repair, adding a 10 inch concrete cap to the south parapet and medium barriers, paint beam ends and spot paint as required, remove the abandoned movable inspection platform, repair concrete substructure, install new light standards and mounting brackets on the south fascia parapet, upgrade the end block transitions, replace approach guide rail and curbing, um, and lastly, minor full depth shoulder reconstruction and approach mill and overlay. So next I will discuss some additional information on the existing conditions and proposed repairs on a few of the scope items. So the existing steel girders are in satisfactory condition. Uh, the girders exhibit deterioration, including peeling paint, light to moderate rust, laminated rust and section loss. So there are currently five areas of concerns and repairs will include um, web as well as bottom flange repairs. So in addition to general repair to the steel to bring it back to existing condition, steel strengthening will be performed to bring the structure up to current code standards. So strengthening includes adding, adding diaphragms, installing bottom flange plates, and installing transverse stiffeners. For light standards, so the existing light standards are close to the curb line and have been damaged by snow plows. Mounting brackets will be used to offset the light standards further from the curb line. For deck joints, um, the existing deck joints are to be rehabilitated due to their condition. Deck joint replacement will, re will require deck and reconstruction as shown in these details here. So quickly touching on highway geometrics of the project site, as you can see, the bridge is heavily traveled with an ADT of just over 62,000. Horizontally, the bridge is located on a tangent with horizontal curves present at both approaches. Vertically, the bridge is on a tangent with a negative 0.35% slope from west to east and the project will not improve any highway geometrics. Um, envi environmental resources and anticipated permits are listed on this slide. Temporary and permanent wetland impacts are not anticipated. Barges may be required to complete um, construction work. 
coordination with US Coast Guard and deep boating will occur to minimize the navigation impacts. In coordination with the deep will occur to minimize potential impacts to NDDB and fish species. So for anticipated park impacts, Bissell Bridge is listed as a statewide multi-use trail. The Captain John Bissell Trail utilizes this bridge to go over the Connecticut River. This trail um, will require temporary closures for rehabilitation tasks. The Windsor Meadow State Park is a 140 acre underdeveloped forest located along 3.5 river miles on the western approach of the bridge in the town of Windsor. So the park includes Bissell Bridge boat launch area, entrance to the John Bissell um, Trail and Windsor River Trail. Temporary access to the boat launch is anticipated to launch and receive the barge and there are no anticipated impacts to Windsor River Trail. So anticipated project impacts for utilities and rights of way, no impacts are anticipated. For traffic impacts on Bissell Bridge, maintenance and protection of traffic will be implemented for installing the waterproofing membrane and pavement, repairing the concrete deck, replacing deck joints and capping concrete parapets. So this work may be accomplished using temporary single lane closures and lane shifts. Due to high traffic volumes on I-291, stage construction may not be feasible and other options will be evaluated. CJ anticipates to get more accurate traffic data as design progress progresses to better evaluate our maintenance of traffic. So this slide shows the potential detour if 291 requires a weekend closure. As this is a river crossing, uh, detour routes are pretty lengthy. First route shown in pink utilizes the Dexter Coffin Bridge crossing in Windsor Locks. The second and third routes shown in red and blue uh, utilizes the Bulkley Bridge crossing in Hartford. So for potential laydown locations, we are evaluating two potential locations. First on the west approach, located ad adjacent to the entrance ramp to I-291 along Windsor Avenue. This location was also recently used as an equipment material laydown area. And also at the east approach, located just after Bissell Bridge, um, the north shoulder and area between the roadway and trail on the east side of the bridge along I-291 westbound. So schedule and construction costs. So for schedule, we are currently in the preliminary design phase and will be moving to final design in the spring. Some key dates are shown on this slide. Startup construction is anticipated to be of spring of 2026. The estimated construction cost is 29.8 million, <clears throat> which is funded 90% with federal funds and 10% state funds. There are no town funds required. I'd also like to note that the cost and schedule are preliminary and are subject to change as design progresses. So this does conclude my presentation and we will begin the Q&A session. Questions can be submitted and answered multiple ways. For the quickest response, um, you can submit your questions through the Zoom Q&A chat box. If you would like to submit your questions through email, please use the email provided on the slide, uh, dotproject0164-0245 at ct.gov. Um, if you would prefer to submit your questions by phone, uh, you can call 860-594-2020 and leave a voicemail, uh, please be sure to state your name and reference the project number, reason for your call in the voicemail. And lastly, I'd like to note the comment period, it will be open through March 7th. All right. Open up for questions. Yeah. Thank you, Jane, for the, the detailed presentation. Uh, as Jane mentioned, uh, yeah, feel free to uh, please ask your questions, uh, bring up any concern you may have concerns you may have uh, or any discussions you want to have uh, about this project. So uh, we're here to get your feedback and any anything you have is uh, appreciated.
right. I think we have a few questions. Um, all right. So can you see the questions, Jen? Um, let's so start from you the want top me to ask them, or you... I'm sorry? Would you like me to ask them? Uh, I can't ask them. No, I just want to make sure that you... Um, you see them. Uh, so uh, question number one from uh, uh, Suzanne, uh, the potential uh, Western laydown area is planned to be a park pending town of Windsor uh, referendum on March 12th. Yeah, that's great information. Um, we'll definitely consider that. Obviously we won't use that as a way down, lay down area, um, knowing that that will be a potential park. So we'll have to look at um, some other potential laid out locations. Yeah, thank you, Jen. Uh, second question, uh, same from Suzanne. Um, is there any planned work on the abutments? Yeah, I'm just gonna bring up this slide. All right, so for the abutments, yes, we are planning to do some work on the abutments. Um, it's gonna be minimum work potential um, so this repair concrete substructure that's specific to the abutments, um, it'll be repairing if there's any spalling, which is concrete falling off the structure, um, bringing it back to its original um, condition if there's hollow areas. So that's if you're tapping on it, sounds hollow. Um, that means there's some deteriorated concrete there. But these abutments are not in, in bad shape by any means. I believe these were satisfactory, so that's a six. So they're, they're pretty good. Um, we don't expect any major concerns with the abutments. Thank you, Dan. Uh, the third question is from uh, News8. Uh, can you explain the detour in more depth? Uh, will, there be, uh, will there definitely be a detour during this project? How long uh, distance and time-wise can travelers expect there uh, to be a detour? Yes, this is a great question. Um, so during our evaluation phase, we actually didn't um, get too in depth in looking at this detour. Uh, we did want to present the detour, potential detours during this meeting, um, showing that it is such a long detour since it is a river crossing. Um, it is not definite that this will happen. We, there'll be a lot more coordination uh, with the state um, as well as us, the designers um, in, in the towns and surrounding areas. Um, if this is to be the route we're going, um, we are getting some more traffic data of the existing structure to see what um, stage construction is, is possible on this structure. Um, and Mez, if you have anything else to add on this one, that would be great. Yeah, um, as part of the final design phase, uh, we will do uh, some uh, traffic uh, uh, counts uh, in this area to determine, you know, um, what's, uh, what's the traffic uh, like. And uh, from there we can, uh, better understand the uh, you know the volumes we're dealing with and um, and then uh, we'll we'll see if uh, if one lane tra uh, one lane uh, traffic is sufficient or we have to do a detour. So it's to be it's to be investigated to, during final design uh, to better uh, um, you know uh, better come up with a scenario that would work. Right. Uh, any other questions? And as we um, mentioned before, uh, before, uh, if after uh, today's meeting uh, you ha still have questions that you want us uh, to answer, please uh, reach out uh, through the email. Uh, you can find the email on the project webpage, and we'd we'll be happy to provide you with answers. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see. So for the email address is dot uh, project zero one six four dash two. I think there is a zero there zero two forty five at ct dot gov. Yep.
uh, I think we can uh, wait a couple of minutes, couple, a couple more minutes, and if uh, no more questions, uh, we can. I see another meeting. question from Suzanne. Yeah. Um, can consideration be given to resurfacing abutment and pier concrete with decorative treatment? Well, I will try to answer this one. Um, we can definitely look into it during final design if this is something that um, the state and towns are looking for better improvement here, um, but that would um, be further discussion. Um, Mez, if you have um, anything to add to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can take a look at that. Uh, yeah, we can definitely look at that one. Typically that is considered a, a, a betterment to a project. So it, it's usually difficult with our funding sources, um, but it it's something that we could definitely consider. Um, it's a little above and beyond this project. Yeah. We anticipate some small patches throughout. Yeah, because for, I mean the um, the purpose and need of this project is to preserve uh, this uh, this bridge and uh, this is as Ryan stated it's a it's considered more of a betterment um, and but you know we, we can take a look at, uh, at what we can do here uh, if there is if there is anything we can do. Um, Hi yeah this is Bao from. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Connecticut duty as well. I just want to chime in. So, um, yeah, we are here to also um, collect your feedback right, and recommendations. So, um, yeah, we will definitely take that into consideration when we go further into design. And uh, we will see uh, what we can do within the budget and the constraints of this project. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, and I think there is another question. Uh, why are the light structures being replaced? They seem to be in working condition when I drive over the bridge at night. Oh, yeah. So there's no concern about um, the light standards function. Uh, the main reason for replacing these lights is due to the proximity of the roadway, the roadway itself. Um, it's been an ongoing concern during the winter months, the plows are hitting these light standards uh, with a potential for them to break off. So our hope is by offsetting these um, a little bit further away from the roadway, we can mitigate this issue. Thank you, John. Any other questions, concerns? Um, I don't see any questions at the moment. Like we answered all the questions we have so far. So, um, so if you don't mind, at the end of the presentation or uh, the end of the meeting, uh, please uh, um, uh, go to the survey and complete the survey. Uh, uh, the the department takes those uh, your comments or the sur your survey um, seriously, and that's how we try to better uh, serve the, the public uh, through these presentations. Oh. And you can just use the QR code here uh, to go directly to the, to the web page. All right, I, th I think I thank you everyone for your time to attend this public information meeting. Yeah, uh, thanks everyone for attending. And uh, if we have no more questions, we can uh, end this meeting. So we appreciate the feedback. And uh, um, uh, as we said before, if you have any comments uh, or questions, uh, you can reach out uh, via email uh, at DOT project. 0164-0245 uh, at ct.gov. Or you can always call us and leave a voicemail. The, the number is 860-594-2020. So thank you very much and have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye.